Good day, everyone. I was born and raised in Detroit. Growing up there, I saw people like me running things. This is a courtroom, not a circus, so we're going to calm down. I'm sorry. What I found there was a passion that I didn't know existed. This is the bottom line. I'm excited to free fall into the limitless possibilities with we the people. So many are fearful of the law. They think it's something that works against them. I think you need to begin to accept responsibility for your mistakes. We are the people. Bryce Lakewood claims he helped his former work wife when she needed a loan, only she skipped out on the balance. Chanel Simpson says she worked off what was owed, but the plaintiff crossed the line by expecting more. All rise. Court is now in session. The Honorable Judge Lauren Lake presiding. You may be seated. Good day, everyone. Good day. This is the case of Lakewood versus Simpson. Mr. Lakewood, you are suing Ms. Simpson for $600 from a personal loan. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. And Ms. Simpson, you say you do not owe the plaintiff anything. Correct, Your Honor. All right. I'd like to start with you, Mr. Lakewood. Tell me uh, what happened. Well, Your Honor, I'm suing the defendant, Chanel Simpson, for $600. Uh, related to a loan I gave her during her time of unemployment. All right. How do you know each other? We worked at the same call center for three years. Okay. Uh, we were good friends during that time. As a matter of fact, a lot of people joked around the office that she was my work wife and I was her work husband. Okay. Because we used to look out for each other and communicate all the time. Like if I went to lunch, I'd buy her lunch. If she went to lunch, she'd buy me some lunch. So we just had a really good friendship, but we didn't, we really just laughed it off because, you know, the work wife, work husband thing, because we knew there was really nothing going on there. All right. And so I've heard that before and, you know, people do establish, you know, alliances and friendships and very close associations. Um, in the workplace, sometimes too close, but it can work. Ms. Simpson, so you experienced a period of unemployment. That is correct, Your Honor. And can you tell me what the circumstances were that prompted you to take a loan from Mr. Lakewood? Uh, yes, Your Honor. Um, so I had been unemployed for a little bit of time. Um, during my tenure at the call center, I hadn't been able to really save up a lot of money. Um, but I had a lot of bills still coming in. Um, so I was taking money from family whenever they were able to bless me with it to help me get things paid down. And Bryce would check in with me from time to time because we were friends. Something so were you still working at the call center then? No. By this time, my department had been downsized, and I was downsized along with it. All right. Mm -hmm. So you were not working at the time. No. Your family would help you out a little bit. Yes. Did you file for unemployment? Yes, but it was taking some time to come in. All right. And so during that time, you were falling behind on some bills, mm -hmm. and you asked Mr. Lakewood to borrow money. Yes. How much money did you ask to borrow? Uh, $2,000, Your Honor. Okay, so Mr. Lakewood, she calls you and asks you to borrow $2,000? Actually, we kept in touch uh, during the time after she uh, became unemployed, and we shoot messages back and forth just checking on each other, and it came to the point where I said, you know, I understand un unemployment takes a long time to kick in, and when it kicks in, they don't pay much. So I said, is there some way I can help you out? She said, sure, that'd be great. I said, well, how much do you need? And she said, well, about $2,000 would really help. Okay. So I, um, I have the proof here of the Venmo that I sent her of $2,000. I'd like to see it, please. Okay. I'll take all of your evidence. Here. Okay. Plus the text messages as well, Your Honor, where we And so, Ms. Simpson, you agree that you did borrow the $2,000 and he did send it? Yes, Your Honor. All right. And here's the proof. So that is not an issue. You have text messages. You guys just checking on each other? Yes. If you need a loan, I got you. $2,000. But I don't know when I can pay you back. You, Mr. Lakewood, say I've been there. There's no rush. I want to make sure you're all right. And then you say, thanks, Bryce. I promise to pay you back. And then you say, I'm not worried. I know where you live. Laugh out loud. You say facts. Yes. Okay. And he says, send me your Venmo. I'll send it over. So how do we get here? 
How is it that there are $600 remaining on the loan? Did she pay back the other $1,400? Well, Your Honor, um, when I made her the loan, I knew the stress level was high, and I didn't put any kind of time frame on the repayment or any that kind of... That was kind of you. Thank you. Or any kind of dollar amount per month or per week, because I didn't want to add to her stress. So um, over the next four months, she paid me back $1,400 of the loan. Coming up... Things started to go south for us. Why did it go south? I was in the office doing my data entry and filing papers, and Mr. Lakewood comes into the office and asks me to do a load of laundry. And later... As a landscaper, I, I know my plants quite well. I happen to know that none of those plants are dangerous to people in any way, shape, or form. We're back with a dispute between Bryce Lakewood and his former work wife, Chanel Simpson, over the status of a loan. I have a side printing business uh, beside the call center that's really starting to flourish and I needed some help with some light uh, data entry and some filing. So I told her if you come by once a week for four weeks and help me with this data entry and help me with this uh, light filing, we'll call it even because I would have had to hire somebody to come in and do it anyway. All right, so that seemed like a decent compromise. You could kind of work it off instead of having the pressure to pay that back. Yes. And so, Ms. Simpson, did you agree to go work at the printing company with Mr. Lakewood? Of course, yes. And what happened? So the first two weeks were fine. Things went smoothly. Um, I was in his office. I was just doing light filing work, uh, data entry. Um, the third week, though, things started to go south for us. Why um, did it go south? So I was in the office doing my data entry and filing papers, and Mr. Lakewood comes into the office and asks me to do a load of laundry. Hold on, Your Honor. I have helped her at her apartment dozens of times when something breaks or leaks or blows out. When her car broke down, I was the one that got in my car with the jumper cables to jump her car. Yeah, but I've that's all mechanical. It's not intimate. It's not personal. I didn't ask you to do my laundry or no, clean I, my bathtub. I've never done her laundry or cleaned her bathtub, but we've helped each other back and forth a bunch of times. So why is it, Mr. Lakewood, if you've got Miss Simpson working, why is it you just make time to do your own laundry? Why ask her to do that? It was just a small favor. I figured that we've done favors back and forth for each other all the time. And okay, it wouldn't be that and big she a deal. obviously didn't want to do it. I did not. Did but you I... express that or did you do the laundry? I did the laundry, Your Honor. Okay, so you did the laundry and then what? So then I do the laundry after I get that done. I'm back in the office and then he comes in and he asks for a back rub. Oh, no, no. That's a complete mischaracterization, Your Honor. I'm sorry. What I said was, wow, it's been a really long day because I'd worked a double at the call center. I said, my shoulders really hurt. Man, I could use a back rub. I didn't go, I could use a back rub or something like that. You didn't have to. You looked dead at my face and said, oh, my shoulders hurt. I need a back rub. How right, am I and, supposed to take that? And so you were offended by that. Yes. And you told him what? I told him no, that that was over the line and inappropriate, and I got out of there. You got so mad, you just decided to leave. I was done for the day. I had oh, one more week. Oh, you were done week. for the day? Yeah. So did you do the last week? I did. I showed up to do the last week because I wanted to finish the job and be done with the $600 that I owed him. And so did you finish the job? Um, no. uh, I feel like I did, and I got there the fourth week, um, and things were going fine. I was in the office in front of the filing cabinet, almost done with the last box of papers, when Mr. Lakewood walks up behind me, brushes up against my back with his chest, hands me a folder over my shoulder and says, hey, do you mind filing this under D for me? It was deliveries, Your Honor. I run a small printing company. Under D? To... I just caught that. Your Honor, <laughs> under deliveries. Yeah, under things D. I print have to be delivered to my clients. Yeah, I did but not you didn't run have to say it like that. And rub up against her and say, hey, file this under D or something like that. Well, you might I am well so have. glad you weren't talking like that because it Whoa. is getting on my last nerve in here. <laughs> Did you rub up against her? I may Let's have. just cut to the I chase. Do you like Miss Simpson? Do you have affection for her that extends beyond the work husband, work wife? Because sometimes that work husband, work wife thing can be code for affections that should not be expressed because both of y'all got real husbands and real wives. Or it could just be affections that maybe you're suppressing because you value the friendship more than an intimate connection, so you just want to keep it cool. So can you cut to the chase? 
Well, Did you have feelings for her? She is low-key kind of fine, Your Honor. And I figured since we didn't work together, if she's a work wife, she might, might as well become the wifey wife. So and I you figured, weren't married? No, neither was And I. you weren't married? No, Your Honor. But you obviously didn't like him like that. No. I did not think he was low-key fine or any kind of fine. Well, there you have it, kids. You in here suing her for $600. She could be in here suing you. As a matter of fact, she could own your own little printing operation because what you basically did amounted to sexual harassment. Trust me, men have been sued and taken down for less. Yes, Your Honor. You cannot be asking women for back rubs and do my laundry and brushing up against them in the office. No, you cannot. I have no idea why you've wasted everybody's time and brought her to court today to sue her for $600. I mean, clearly she worked off $150 worth of filing in four weeks. Well, Your Honor, I had to pay someone else to come in for five days to finish the work that she left. Yeah, because you're so busy worrying her to death about doing your laundry, rubbing your back, and coming in between the file cabinet, you threw her all off. You made her uncomfortable. And that's your fault, not hers. That was Judgment not my for intention. the defendant, court is adjourned. I'm done with it. You know better. All rise. Judge Lake has ruled in favor of the defendant. The plaintiff's case is dismissed. I needed my money. You don't need the money. I gave you the money. I worked off what I owed you. You didn't need to take it this far. Well, I, I had to pay someone else to come in and finish your work. So. That was not my problem. You shouldn't have been so inappropriate. No, it was my problem because I, yeah. I need my money. Coming up. My dog, you know, like, he was just acting different. He was throwing up and all of this. So then I got really worried, you know, like, what's going on? When we took him to the bed, and when the, we took him to the bed, is when, you know, like, she said that it was, there was poison. The, the reason why he was acting like that, he was poisoned. Network featuring dynamic judges and live legal programming. Well, we're not anxious, but we're in my courtroom. Unique court shows. Where is any information about the company? Live legal news. That's what you should have done. And a commitment to justice. Either you tried or you did it. The next generation of court programming in one dynamic network. Justice Central. You're watching Justice Central. Stay tuned. You're watching Justice Central. You're watching We the People with Judge Lauren Lake. David and Sophia Nunez claim they were shocked that the beautiful garden they had installed was the reason their dog almost died. Michael Crest says the co-plaintiffs only asked for plants that were non-toxic to kids. Good day, everyone. Good day. This is the case of Nunez versus Crest. Mr. and Mrs. Nunez, you are suing Mr. Crest for $2,569 in veterinary bills for your dog eating poisonous plants. Is that correct? That's correct. And the defendant, you claim you provided the exact services you were contracted to do. Is that correct? That's correct, Your Honor. Start from the beginning, Mr. and Ms. Nunez. You were getting plants. Uh, yes. Yeah, okay, explain here. to the court what so, you contracted Mr. Crest to do. You know, my wife's always wanted a beautiful garden, so, you know. It has always been my dream. Yeah. So, you know, why not provide that for her? She contracted this individual here, and uh, things just didn't go as planned. How did planned. you find Mr. Crest, Ms. Nunes? Yeah, so we found him online. So I was able to find him online. You know, I, I, was, I saw so many, like, good reviews when I was looking online for that. Mr. Crest, do you remember getting the uh, call from Mr. or Mrs. Nunez mm -hmm. about her wanting you to do their yard? Yes, I do, Your Honor. All right, and what did that call uh, entail? What, what were you talking about? Uh, the initial call was pretty general, um, but I did meet her at her home. Uh, she did have some very detailed uh, inspirational pictures that she uh, gave me, showing me what she wanted uh, from this job. She did specify that they had a two-year-old son. Uh, this garden needed to be safe for their child to be in. We had an arrangement that none of the flowers, none of the plants were going to be toxic. Coming up. When I came home, she told me that the dog wasn't acting right. I saw the dog. The dog was almost dead. He was lying on the ground with his tongue hanging out. We're back with the case of David and Sophia Nunez, who brought landscaper Michael Crest to court for planting a toxic garden. Was this arrangement in writing? Yes, it was. Yes, it was. Did you bring the contract? Um, I have it right here. May I see it, please? Absolutely. Thank you. 
Thank you. Mm -hmm. Continue. So we agreed that none of the plants would be poisonous. Um, as a landscaper, no, I, I know my plants quite well. Um, I happen to know that uh -huh. none of those plants yeah. are dangerous to people in any way, shape, or form. I see in the agreement that you're to plant non-poisonous plants. Customers going to pre-purchase the seeds. That's correct. So what went wrong? Did you get the garden you wanted? Well, every you know everything in the beginning, nothing was you know was wrong. Like it was beautiful. Like he did a great job. I was I was extremely happy. He was happy. I was happy. So everything was fine. But then we got we got we got a dog. You know, and a month a month after we got a dog. A month or so, yeah. And then everything was fine. But all of a sudden, I realized that my dog, you know, like he was just acting different. He was throwing up and all of this. So then I got really worried. You know, like what's going on? So that's when when we took him to the bed, and when the, we took him to the bed is when, you know, like she said that it was, there was poison. The, the reason why he was acting like that, he was poisoned. When I found the dog, when I came home, she told me that the dog wasn't acting right. I saw the dog. The dog was almost dead. He was lying on the ground with his tongue hanging out, almost lifeless. When, you, when we arranged for him to put all the, all the plants in, the, in our garden, we specifically told him we wanted nothing not toxic because we have a two-year-old son. You're right. Yeah, the dog wasn't, wasn't around yet, but, I mean, he had to be aware that animals would eventually get to these plants because there's rabbits, there's squirrels, raccoons, all kind of stuff that, you know, that could be toxic to. I don't want to find any dead animals in my garden. Judge Lake's verdict when We the People returns. When they ex uh, specifically said, we don't want anything poisonous, you understood what that meant? I understood. Or what was your understanding? My understanding was that they didn't want any plants in their garden that could be potentially toxic to their two-year-old child. Mm. They well, said they did not want any plants in their garden that were dangerous well, to humans. Well, why should I, we have the, to explain we, that? We, because we there that, are I, things I, I that are dangerous that. to lots of different animals that aren't dangerous well, to well, humans. Chocolate is dangerous to, talk, is dangerous to dogs. Talk, right? Is it dangerous to humans? Let's get some order. You should have, just like you're just arguing about in open court today, said there are so many variables to what is toxic. All you had to do was ask them one question. When you say nothing poisonous, do you mean poisonous to humans, animals, or both? In this instance, I do believe, Mr. Kress, you failed to ask one important question that a reasonable person in your business at that time with a family and a yard and a young child should have asked. For that reason, judgment for the plaintiff for $2,569. Court is adjourned. All rise. Judge Lake has ruled in favor of the co-plaintiffs. The defendant owes $2,569. I respect Judge Lake, but I completely disagree with this. I mean, I, I, I'm sorry about what happened to your dog. I love dogs, but you did not tell me you were getting one, so I don't think there's much else I could have done. So what you're saying is you're not sorry. What I'm saying uh -huh. is I didn't know you were going to have a dog.